Feeling Constrictors here. Welcome back to another live, another Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central. We're going live. Going to talk about some stuff. Have a good time. Got a little prep today. I had a little time to do a little extra prep. Going to go over some kind of things. Some things that I think are just good for everybody to know that's into the reptile breeding um, situation. Going to give a few minutes for people to come in. I want to thank the people already jumped in here. I see Benjamin. Going to call you Ben if you don't mind. Iron Dog Chris. Hello, Carl. Hello, Doug. Hello. How are you doing? What's going on, Dirk? Man, you are doing badass interviews, my friend. I love them. Love them. I used to do a lot of interviews back in the day. Kind of just kind of got out of it, you know what I mean? But you're doing a you're doing a great job. Like you got you got the energy. I love it. It's caught your Cusco one. And I like that you're doing these things in the middle of the day, too, because that's when I could really catch some stuff. Um, it got me through like a couple hours today, even though it was only about a half hour long. I kept thinking about some stuff, which is really nice. And I'm not. I'm not like against Brian Cusco and I'm just not a giant fan. I don't follow him on everything he does. Um, but uh, perfect interview. It's great. As long as you're enjoying it, man, yeah, it shows. <clears throat> it's good as it exotics. Hello. Thought you said you weren't going to make it, man. You better not be neglecting animals so you can come in here and heckle me. <laughs> I'm like kidding. No, I'm just going to give some tips. I usually don't do a whole lot of tip videos. Again, I used to do a lot of that stuff. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of got out of it. seems like everybody knows everything. And everything changes so often. That's that's what's so nice. Gypsy girl, hello. Good to see you. Um, Benjamin, ho hopefully, Ben, hopefully you can stick around for a little while. It's Holly. Hello, Holly. Good. You know, Daryl's a good guy and all, but, you know, Holly, Daryl, it's an easy pick. <laughs> He's going to watch this later, though. <laughs> he knows I love him. <laughs> Daryl's my middle name, but he has it spelled way cooler than mine. My Daryl spelling is is like straight, straight off the island. It's 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 horrendous. Working late at the other job. It's all right. It's all right. It's good to see y'all saying hello to each other. Um, after the show, I uh, will be posting some links throughout. But after the show, Todd from TNT Balls will be going live, and I'm hoping that y'all will jump over there and show him some love because he's definitely going to show you all some love. It's the way he is. Um, might want to bring your own towel and get a little gross at times. No, I'm like kidding. Um, Jimmy, good to see you, my friend. I don't want to embarrass you, but I know your girlfriend's probably not watching, but congratulations. Uh, I see you're in a relationship. That's really nice to see you had a great trip in Florida. Another young kid with really good edits. And a couple of years, you're going to be right where you want to be with this YouTube thing, too. Ball Python Love, my friend. How are you? Really good to see you, my friend. Always good to see you. Becca, how are you? I've mailed out your stickers uh, today <laughs> as well as um, Venom's yesterday. I think I mailed them out yesterday, if I'm being honest. I think it was yesterday. And uh, I think Derek's sending me something, or I'm going to send Derek something. I need to get his address still because I have an envelope here already done up and ready for him. <clears throat> just, just waiting to fill it out. <clears throat> Doug the dog, Doug the monster. Let me throw you up. Doug's been around for a little bit now. Oh my God, I hate seeing myself on video. Mm. Gonna add Doug as a moderator. Gotta add Becca as a moderator. Known Becca for quite a while now. See, you were having some clutches too, which is really nice. Nice to see. There's quite a few people in here with their first clutches. Um, I heard, I heard uh, Ball Python Love got his incubator which is good, and that's good. I'm going to discuss a little bit about that here in a second. Yeah, don't don't blast any fake anything that comes in. We're just going to be cool. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping a friend is going to send me a little code here or take over at some point. I think he has to do that. Um, but if we get any visitors from strangers, just let them be in here and talk. You know what I mean? There's no bad that can be done. We all know that the situation is. Um, don't worry about deleting anything. Just let them sit up there. I guess it really doesn't matter, um, but we're going to try and find out what's doing fully what's happening. I'm still waiting to hear back from a friend of mine if he's going to be able to be able to do this for us. <laughs> yeah, man, stickers are something else. They, they, they do take forever. I'm not a big fan of stickers, I, but uh, they're growing on me. They're growing on me. I'm actually... A lot of the pictures fell from the road construction and stuff, and I've invested so much money in these frames. 
I'm going to start taking everybody's stickers on. I think I'm going to go ahead and put them on something and, and do a whole thing. I could use some backdrop. My wife wants to set up a spot just to do these things for me. She takes her time. Not Lou, how you doing, my friend? Just going to jump over, make sure everybody's blue that needs to be blue. Um, and even if I make somebody blue that you guys are like, why would you do that? Don't worry about it. That's just the safekeeping, making sure nobody kicks anybody out of anything. I like to be sneaky too. <laughs> you got to fight a sneak with a sneak. Um, and I'm not the sneaker. I have a friend that's one. I can barely turn my crap on. All right. Um, I'm just going to start going here. Like I said, I'm going to get some tips. These things are, are really awesome tips. The first one is uh, definitely your cooler. Now, I keep this thing with me all the time. Um, I've never had to use it. But if ever, something ever goes wrong with my incubator, I will have this. I mean, I, I always try to keep some sort of backup because you would be surprised. I can't tell you how many horror stories start with uh, my incubator went out and I'm in trouble. Now, luckily, I have a whole other incubator that's all set up. All I got to do is plug in and it's ready to go. But until then, I always kept this around. I catch many of eggs in a cooler incubator. Um, not since I've been up here in the UP, but many of them. Pretty easy to do. Get that spat out of there. Wobble it out enough that you can fit a cord through. Now I'm just gonna have uh, I'm just gonna have this piece of flex wide in here for right now. Ah, clamshell. Um, you're gonna want to tape this down. Use clear tape, whatever you really want. Uh, you can use a zoom ed mat as well. And you're gonna want to thread the cord through the little hole, real simple like. And uh, wherever I do the wire ball. Then you're going to want to line the whole bottom of it with water bottles. Real simple. Set your egg boxes on top of that and make sure you're plugging this into your thermostat as well as that thermostat probe needs to be inside with your eggs. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case with like my incubators that I'm using right now. But when you're making it, we're doing it with a cooler. There's a lot of heat loss when you open this lid and these water bottles are in there to retain heat, but they're not going to just, they're not going to be super efficient in a cooler that you're opening up the whole lid. Now, some people have the coolers where they have the little opening where you can pop it open. You can do that if you want. It just makes it kind of a pain in the butt. If you open it real quick, take a look at your egg, make sure everything's doing good and shut it. You're perfectly fine. But this thing is a great thing to have just in general to have around in case your incubator goes out. I can't tell you how many people and you guys will see over the years watching this stuff, how many people have incubator issues and not have something to back up with. So I always tell everybody, even you can do this even with a, a styrofoam cooler and a light bulb and poke holes through it with a pencil until you get the temperature just right. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do uh, that are pretty inexpensive. Again, um, I use these things for more of like a safety reason. Of course, I got the old refrigerator incubator that I have now, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't isn't too bad. Um, Heather, thanks for joining Oh, oh, critters. Yeah, you'll be out there looking for some critters. I'll have them all over my yard. I have a bunch of pine snakes going crazy this year. What's going on, Petals and Scales? What's going on? Um, I'm going to be talking about Petals and Scales here on the second part of this video. Uh, the reason why I'm kind of just waiting a little bit is to um, let people get in here because it's and it's not a serious topic. And um, I asked them if I could if I could do this and if other people could be involved. And they said, yes. Yeah. So if you want to know what that is, stick around for a little bit more. Um, also, real quick, I want to thank um, Yvonne, Lexi, and Mark for joining as members. Thank you so much. I want to thank all the last week's Super Chats. I got a, I got a big thing to go through with Super Chats. I mean, they just were going like crazy. Leon, uh, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, just a, a great person and supporter. Um, I'm waiting for some more videos. I know you're busy buying your house. Actually, you just bought one. So congratulations to you, my friend. Uh, I get too stressed out buying a house too stressed out. But anyway, stay tuned for a little bit. We do want to talk. Uh, Zach, thank you for joining my friend. Um, you found a, uh, a plain belly water snake yesterday. No doubt. Yeah. Pine snakes or something, man. They don't mess around. They call them fox snakes over here, but they're pine snakes, gopher snakes, same type of thing. They, they really are. They all, they're, they're cantankerous. They really are. People say like, oh, snakes, they'll just go away from you if you go near them. That's not always true. I mean, mambas will chase you down. Thank, thankfully, we don't live in the area that has mambas, but Pine snakes, fox snakes, they hold their ground. They're weird, tough little snake for sure. Um, ringnecks, yeah, little ringnecks. They're actually mildly venomous, believe it or not, those ringneck snakes. Um, nothing that would bother you at all, but they're uh, a rear fanged, mildly venomous. Uh, crickets don't find them very comfortable, I guess. 
Ole, Ole. Yeah. COVID. I'll say it in my videos. I don't care. The, the ruiner of years there really has been. It's been a horrible time for families and, you know, it's made holidays horrible. But let's just, you know, we're going to push forward because I think pretty soon people are going to be just like, I, I'll take the flu now because I, I need to. I need to grow people. I <laughs> think people have passed that point already. We will see. Um, what's this? We only have two kinds here. Scott. Yeah. What are you having, Scott? I'd love to know. We, I don't know. That's something I don't know. TJ was here. He'd tell us. He's probably been reading the books on it. Yeah, see? We all want to know, Doug, what you have for sure. What's up, Osmar? Oh, no, you ain't. <laughs> what's going on my friend love the name i gotta try and be very careful on busting balls man my wife even told me she goes i always told you man you know if people don't know you you're gonna they're gonna freak out you know sometimes you go a little bit harder and you don't even realize it because you know sometimes i go for the funny over the thought of it and i shouldn't do that but it's it's caught up to me and like i swear in like a week's time like boom 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 but trust and believe i am a very non-malicious person and i know if you don't know me and you just jumped in you would not know that I listen, I, we know some shady stuff that's gone on. Somebody in the community did some messaging of a youngin or some crap. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'm not going to jump on here and just dog out a person. I think everybody knows what's up. I'm all set with that. Y'all know my feelings, but I don't, I don't dog people and kind of crap on nobody. I always just mess with everybody. I do a lot of messing with people. What's up, Jeremy? What's up, Jer? I want to yell. <laughs> Just giving out some tips, man. I'm telling you, that cooler deal will save your life. I mean, it's helped out a lot of people in a pinch. And, you know, for, you know, 20 bucks, you can throw something together real quick if you needed to. It's good to have something sitting around. Now, I know uh, Ball Python Love got his incubator in, which is really good. Uh, get that thing hooked up and, and just let it start cooking, get it dialed in. Um, but that's going to kind of go into my next point is um, with my incubators. Uh, I add ambient water to my incubator itself for humidity reasons. When you have eggs in the incubator, you want them. Let's talk about eggs in the incubator. Why not? I'll put this aside. Uh, I'll grab this bucket of fun out. Ugh. Like I've set up my egg boxes. Y'all have seen how I've done it. Um, take my container. I take my river rocks, really clean, washed with Donna just soap, rinsed off really, really well. And again, you could pretty much use anything that's going to separate the eggs from the water. I like the river rock. I can wash it and reuse it. I know a lot of people use sponges and stuff like that, but I don't know, man. Just wash it out real good. That's all. Just wash it out really good and clean it out. You don't want any purities in there. Um, set my eggs in. Um, works excellent. Put my lid on top or put some press and seal over the top of it. Put my lids on it. Set it. Forget it. But you want your humidity as close to 100% as you can inside that egg box. And it's not always easy to do, uh, especially if you live in the north where it's real, or a place that's real dry. It can be very difficult. So I always add ambient water. Now, I thought I was being clever when I was doing this, but then I seen it. I was already doing this, and then I seen uh, Matt from uh, Olympus Reptiles, and he was putting a drawer full of water in his because he has the same refrigerator incubator that I was using back in the day. Um, he was using the same model, everything. Uh, he was doing the same thing. But um, putting I, in mind now, I have a nice big bowl of water in there, just kind of some ambient extra humidity with inside the incubator because um, you really want to try and get that humidity the best you can. And that's why we use the press and seal. Now, about two weeks before the eggs are due to hatch, I usually remove the press and seal. Um, you will notice that you're going to have a lot of uh, condensation building up on the glass uh, on the side of the bins. And usually about two weeks in uh, or two weeks left on the on the head. So that's when I usually take that right off all the way around. Um, at that point, they're doing really good. The humidity is perfectly fine. Um, and it seems to help. Another thing that I do is I also poke a pinhole. And uh, of course, I don't have a pin. Yes, I do. Er, er. Well, this is a needle. Anyway, me needle pin, literally a pinhole on each side all the way around my bins. And that's the only holes I keep in them, just a tiny little pinhole all the way around on my sides. Um, and then I pretty much set them and forget them. I don't mess with my eggs. A lot of people freak out when waiting for um, their eggs to hatch. Once they're in the incubator, I just I just kind of forget about them. I know my incubator does what it does. I let, it, I let it do what it does. If I'm being honest, every now and then, I don't know why I do this, I'll open it up and I'll spin them around. 
I might take a look in there and I'll shoot the temp every now and then just to make sure the temp's where I want it to be. Um, I like my temperatures about 88.5 to 89.5. Anywhere in there is where I like my temperatures to be. Um, I have a 100% hatch rate with these temperatures that way. Um, you, you, you can go a little bit higher. Some people do. Uh, some people think think that when you go a little bit higher or lower temperature, that, that sometimes helps uh, certain morphs that have issues, um, you know, uh, with kinking and things like that. I know a lot of people were trying that method when it came to the panda pides. They thought that if you incubated at a different temperature, it, 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 it turns out it really didn't make too much of a difference. Yeah, the water bottles are there really just to retain the heat in the, um, I, you know, I keep them in all my incubators. I always keep some water in there. Um, and that's really just to maintain the heat when you open up and you shut. It kind of brings it back up to temperature really quick or a lot quicker. Um, I suggest everybody have uh, some jugs of water in their incubators if you can, if you have room in there. Um, it, it can help you out. It could save you. It really can. Oh, man, I forgot Doug's got some answers here. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? They do have an adder over there. I don't remember what it's called, but uh, yeah, see, I don't even have any. I have no venomous snakes in the UP. There's no rattlesnakes, nothing. I'm just trying to catch a couple comments just in case. I, I miss a lot of comments when I do these and I feel bad about it <laughs> and I go back and I read them. Um, thankfully, a lot of people answer each other's questions, which is really cool. And another reason why I like the community. It's nice and helpful. I should get this cooler thing out of here because I'm going to kick it a thousand times. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, so unprofessional. <laughs> um, a lot of times I get questions about stubborn eaters. Uh, I know a lot of you have had those questions. A lot of you get that stuff. Um, a lot of the times it's how you're keeping them, where you're keeping them. Sometimes snakes, uh, especially ball pythons, who feel most at home and feel most comfortable and most secure is actually the best word because ball pythons are very insecure snakes. Um, that's why they're ball pythons. That's why they're not, uh, you know, hissing gargoyle snakes or, you know, any other kind of crazy thing. They're, they're ball pythons because of their demeanor. And they, did, they, like, they like just to be in solitude. They like to be chill. They like to feel something on their sides. They like to feel like they're snug. Um, they like to feel like there's only one way in and one way out. Um, this is how they live, you know. So um, because of that, sometimes when you have a snake that just you get a snake and you, you don't know the demeanor of it, you bought it off of um, Morph Market and it gets there and the person's like, yeah, it eats uh, frozen thought or live, you know, or whatever, never have a problem. Well, you don't know what size tub they're, they're keeping it in. And I guarantee you, none of you probably ever asked, hey, what size tub are you keeping it in? Unless you were asking because you had no idea what size bin uh, 250 gram snake should be in. You know what I'm saying? So um, a lot of the times, if you put a snake into a small container um, to f and feed it, they will take a meal. So a lot of the times it's they have to feel very secure. I had a big problem when I used the see-through um, containers with a lot of my snakes that were just I considered them to be picky eaters. And once I moved them over to the ARS with the solid, you know, tubs, they became my best eaters, you know, um, or just at least as good as the rest of them. So sometimes moving them down to a smaller bin, sometimes, you know, I, you, you, uh, you know, when you're buying racks, it's like, do I buy, I have snakes that fit in this and I have snakes that will fit in that. What one should I buy? I can't afford just to buy a bunch of racks. So, um, sometimes just moving them down or even putting them in a smaller bin to feed them will help you out a lot. Um, I see a lot of people say, try this, try that. I remember back in the day when, I mean, ball pythons really just started becoming a thing where normals were really all you were, you were seeing. Um, people were having a hard time getting them to eat. And a lot of people would actually send them with chicken broth and stuff like that. And, and that would work a lot of times. It actually has worked for me before. A couple of drops on the rat's head seem to work pretty good. Um, but those are a couple things that um, that you can try for sure. What's up, Rob? Y'all say hi, Rob. He is my uh, he's my good friend, man. I only got a couple good friends up here. He's definitely one of them. He's already blue, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going through making sure everybody's got some uh, some clout. I don't see any Bizarro Uper or Bizarro Iron Dog or Bizarro Animal Houses or anything. But um, then again. I don't know. We'll wait. 
<laughs> and again, a lot of this stuff might be stuff that you already know, but there's a lot of new people in here and there's a lot of people that are still on the fence. There's, we actually have, you know, quite a few people that watch our videos and watch our lives that don't even keep snakes, you know, uh, their, their best snakes, uh, they enjoy and they like snakes, but they like watching on screen. You know what I mean? Uh, it's funny. A lot of people start out that way. See, we're learning something new. Well, thank you, Doug. When are you going to start making videos? J dog in the house, J dog in the house. What's with the RE? I think that's new. J dog one party. Whoa. You got ultimate, you got extra channels, brother. I think you got extra channels. It's always good to see you, J-Dog, though, I'll tell you that. Another guy has got a ton of energy. Yeah, I keep learning. I, you learn stuff, Matt, I'll tell you what. I still, I'll be amazed. With, I'll bring this with me forever. You know, some new guy has never done nothing with this crap. He's a nobody in the ball python world. When I say that, please, bleeding hearts, don't freak out. Be like, oh, is it nothing? Let me finish. <laughs> uh he came across a situation and he did something that I was like, when I heard about it, I was like, this guy's crazy. He's posting the pictures of him doing this. Uh, if this goes bad or, you know, I didn't even think it was going to go well at all. But uh, honey reptiles, you had an egg, you had a funky piece in the egg, cut it out, had exposed yolk egg sitting there. Uh, I mean, this thing went full term, did just fine. I would have never guessed it. New guy in the block tried something different that I would never even think to try. Uh, you keep, keep learning. Don't be afraid to learn something from anybody. Learned a lot of cool little techniques from watching lazy millennials jump on here, never holding a snake before in their lives. And all of a sudden they got snakes and they do something. And I'm like, Hey, that's kind of cool. <laughs> no offense, millennials. Okay. I got kids or millennials. It's all good. <laughs> Yeah, Doug, I would like you to make some uh, videos, man. Go out and find us one of these snakes. I mean, you should be able to walk across there in a day or two. You should be able to get us a snake. Everybody in favor, say aye. It's over now, Doug. You can be making videos by next week. <laughs> He's always going to be blaming the weather, though. <clears throat> Another thing that I get a lot is... Um, I get this often. This has happened quite a few times. Y'all might even remember a few people in our community have had this issue where they're going to move long distances. Now they're moving, they're going to travel long distances and they're trying to figure out how to bring their collection of snakes with them. They have no idea how they're going to do. I just wheel the racks inside the U-Haul and strapped all the stuff and taped the doors shut. Uh, believe it or not, that's, um, well, listen, Doug, do it, do it, do it for the kids. That's what I'm saying. We'd all appreciate that. We're all going to be subscribers. Matter of fact, if you put a link in your channel down there, we'll all get primed and ready. So you already have people waiting for that video to pop. Feel free. Is Mary in here? Oh, my gosh. Hello, Miss Mary. Thank you so much for stopping in here. I appreciate you. How's my boy Mitch doing? Me and Mitch are close enough in age to not make it dirty, I promise. And plus... We're, we're telling you about it. You know, it's up front. Neither one of us are probably very good liars. <laughs> Reptile feedings, man. Welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for stopping in. I don't think you're blue, but I know you've been around. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I don't mean you're a floozy or nothing, my friend. I'm going to be careful about busting balls with people I just met. <laughs> no, I really do. And, and I'm that bad. Like my son, Liam, he... he he lets me do it sometimes just to tell me after I leave that I messed with his coach a little too much at basketball or no wonder these people don't like me. Yeah, Mary was in Arlington. I seen a picture over there. I think she photobombed somebody. I don't even remember who it was. I was flipping through. I was like, yo, that's Mary. She photobombed people. I'm hoping to make an Arlington show. I'm, I'm going to be at Tinley in October for sure. For sure. I'm not sure what capacity I might even, I might be helping like uh, Garrett close up on Sunday or something like that, but I'll definitely be up there. Yeah, I miss some people. I don't miss all people. COVID, COVID I have to say, blocked 
a few people I don't have to go see because of COVID. It really make me cry. <laughs> and if you're watching, uh, I'll come see you soon. <laughs> I know that's not good. I'm a busy guy. But I get a lot of times where we're moving, you know, and you're like, how can I transfer my snakes? I believe uh, Donnie from DR Reptiles. Um, race. Oh, God, somebody help me out here. Racist pythons. He went up there and, and hooked up with that uh, blue line morphs guy, that guy. He was moving snakes back and forth. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, the best way to move your snakes long distance is just as if you were going to ship them somewhere long distance. If you have, uh, if you have a large styrofoam you know, a large shipping box. I have a couple of them, you know what I mean? Uh, I would fit a couple of my snakes in there. Um, that's a great thing to use. Um, even if you have to go out and buy big Tupperware tubs, a great thing to use. Um, and then work on getting the temperatures with the, you know, real actual heat packs, you know, using actual heat packs. And if it's a, try and do a straight drive through. If you have to stop, then you will just have to keep, you know, track of everything and change them out. Don't put them in your racks. Don't tape up the racks. Uh, ball pythons, um, they're a hardy snake, but again, they don't do well in stress at all. I mean, uh, you, you can kill a ball python with stress and shock easier than anything. And a ride with all of its substrate and bouncing around uh, for 24 hours through someplace is not going to help you. It's not going to help the snakes. It's not going to do well for them at all. Um, a lot of people tell me after they've done big moves, my snake's going off of food. Uh, it's a it's an experience. So your best off is um, spending the money, uh, purchasing the bags you need, putting them individually in their own bag. You can pack them all in a big tub, you know, or how many tubs you need. Uh, but that's the best way to sh move your snakes. Don't... Um, don't try and do them in the bins. Don't don't put them in the bin or get uh, like the tubs we're using for eggs. Don't just put them inside one of these and put a lid on them and stack them up. Um, that will be fine. Like I'll, I'll stack mine up like that if I'm going to do a show or if I'm going to the state park to do one of their uh, presentations or something like that there. I'll, I'll put them up like that because they're only going a couple miles down the road. But other than that, um, it's it's best if you, if you really pack them up just like if you were going to ship them out. Uh, you will really save yourself a lot of trouble and headache. And I know a lot of people move snakes like that. Even if you're moving your snakes just, you know, a few hours away, it's just the best way to go. Uh, ball pythons can, you know, I've, I've seen times where, you know, back in the day I used to put males in with other males when they had a female trying to get a male female interest in them or a male interest in a female, you would, you know, people would put them in there. Now it's best just to put like a, a shed from another male in there and not another male. But uh, even within a few hours, that's enough to stress out a male to where it will literally die, you know, um, just from having another male in there. So ball pythons are real hardy. They can take uh, they can take a lot, but they don't do well well in stress. All right, what's that, Mary? Uh, then I took pictures of folks and didn't get them pics. Oh, Brian Cusker and Jason Spencer are the first people. All right, yeah, cool, cool, cool. I haven't seen Cusco since like uh, Tinley, twenty seventeen Tinley. Nice guy. I don't have nothing, you know, I, it, to me, he's always been nice. He, I haven't seen him, you know, uh, he's not outwardly a, a, a bad person to anybody. And that was a great interview you did with him. L Harper, uh, again, another awesome person right there. You've been putting out some rat work, I see, my friend. I keep up with your stuff. You know I do, man. <laughs> Guy's been around for a while, too, man. I love it. it that's another guy that has just a, a great excitement for what, what he's doing. And that's all it takes. Just have a little bit. Just, just enjoy it. And you enjoy it. You, you'll do fine. And and he's come a long way. Come a long way. Red Oaks. I must not be far away. Oh, you can't go to Texas now because all the Californians went out to Texas. They're going to be in California here pretty soon. No, no, Texas. No, they, no, we won't. They're going to get really mad. Mary's like, no, we won't. <laughs> a lot of awesome people in here for sure. So is there any uh, other things that people are wondering? Just um, like these are just some of the tips that I thought would be helpful for a lot of you out there or some of you out there um, that I want to talk about. Again, I don't do a lot of these only because somebody's done it a thousand times over and probably a thousand times better. I don't do videos on how to do this with ball pythons and that with ball pythons because um, 
when I when I want to learn something about them, I want somebody who's very clear and uh, very detailed. And um, I might be very detailed, but not very clear. And when I'm presenting it, so I always tell people um, there's a there's some great channels to go to. Um, Gavin from Balls to You. Um, I don't even think we're friends, but I'll still tell you a great channel to go and learn from if you're if you're really wanting to find out something. You could skim through his videos. He's got something about everything, and he's and it's going to be from from firsthand experience. I mean, he's taking notes the whole time throughout all the different clutches that he's doing, and um, a lot of respect for the guy. A lot of respect for the guy. All right, <clears throat> let's take a quick second here for y'all to kind of grab a drink. If you need to grab a drink, we're going to talk about some friends of ours. They jumped on the scene, and uh, for me anyway, they kind of jumped on the scene, and then they kind of disappeared almost as quickly as they jumped on the scene. And I was like, I wonder what's doing. Uh, I didn't know what was going on. It was kind of uh, I was kind of surprised because they came in real, real, real hot, heavy at first, and then they kind of disappeared. And uh, a few nights back, I heard a little rumblings about something, and I was sent a link to go check out this video that I'm surprised I missed because um, I usually catch their stuff, but YouTube again doesn't tell me everything. And I went back and checked it out. Now, the channel I'm talking about is Pedals and Scales. Now, I'm going to put a link in here in a second. It is a link to uh, a video that will do it much more justice than I will trying to tell you their situation and what happened with them. Um, but when I watched it, I was like, you know, you know me. I like to, um, you know, it's the people that kind of get skimmed over when you're when you're kind of the new fish in the pond, you know. Um Kind of like my friend Mike, who passed away. I, I, still to this day, I was so shocked that I didn't learn about this earlier for months. And then I ever seen nothing about it anywhere in any Instagrams or Facebooks or YouTube videos about, oh, hey, Mike from Morphed Out Constrictors just passed away. So I was like, I got I to gotta put something out there. Well, same as this, you know what I mean? Not a lot of people know them. They didn't get a great chance to jump in here and make a bunch of videos and, and become part of uh, the community. But when they did, they jumped in, you know, feet first and we're like, or head first. And we're like, yo, uh, this is a great community. I want to be part of it. And I recognize that. Um, so Mike and Jen over there has had some, had a pretty rough going here over the last so many months um, with the loss of family members. And uh, I think we all can relate to that, that um, when you lose somebody close to you or a mentor or um, somebody who's just been there for you, you know, somebody that you have good memories with that um, you won't be able to share with anymore. And it's a, it's a hard time. And to be faced with multiple um, family loss of family members um, consecutively and within a very short period of time is hard enough, but they suffered a fire um, in their garage. And uh, that happens to be where they kept their snakes. And um, again, I'm going to put a link to their video. I would, I would implore you to all go over there and just and take a listen um, and see what they have to say. Um, and then I want you all to take the next couple of weeks and kind of help me think of different ideas. I've already talked to, uh, hopefully, Ben. Um, Alberto, hello, man. Thank you for stopping in. I thank you so much. I appreciate that. Kurt Wood, hello, my friend. Um, but they lost a lot of stakes. They lost a lot of stuff. Um, they're still fighting with insurance. And I don't know how many of you out there have been homeowners and had to deal with insurance companies, but... Let me tell you, it can be so, it's a process. I mean, they take two seconds taking your money. And if you don't pay on time, they they don't have to waste any time calling you up. Where's that money at? But when it comes to kind of taking care of stuff, they really are fighting to give you the least amount as possible. I've always said insurance is just a scam. You know, uh, I like my own insurances. Um, it, it just seems to work out better for me, but that's just the way it works. And um they're not looking to get anything. I kind of went to them and said, Hey, can I do something for you? Again, it, it might just bring some smiles to people's faces, but that can't hurt. I don't know what we can do here, but I know we have a great community. Um, and Benjamin Black and Smith, I don't know if he's still in here or not. I hope he is. He's one of the members of my channel. Um, he's been a supporter of mine for a long time, a subscriber. And he mentioned to me if, about a week ago that he had a two tub rack that was built by Bill from BC Pythons out of PVC. I don't know if you all are familiar with BC Pythons, but a great man. Um, and he built, he built some nice racks. And he said, hey, man, I would like to just donate this to your channel to do a giveaway for your channel and I'll pay shipping on it. And I was like, man, you know, that's really awesome of you. But listen, I'm actually thinking about doing something here to try and raise a little bit of something for uh, Pedals and Scales. And I gave him a, a very brief rundown on it. And before... 
know, the, before you knew it, he was like, I'm in. Sounds great. Let's do it that way. <laughs> you know, so um, we've got something from him that we could put in some sort of raffle. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do it. Again, this is um, I'm thinking about maybe having a if Justin and Chris from My Dog Reptiles and My Animal House, when they do the Iron Animal Show, maybe if they can have me on for a short period of time and maybe a few other people that are interested, uh, we can do a little roundtable on a live and kind of come up with some ideas. Um, I've had some short ideas, uh, basically like um, this two-tub rack. Maybe everybody who's interested in that can put a $5 uh, PayPal donation uh, to directly to Petal and Scales, um, and they will let me know all the names in that, and then all those people will be in a drawing for the rack. Um, and again, I just pick $5 out of the air, and I'm just picking things. Uh, this is very new, but I don't want I, I don't want this to be a me thing, doing this thing, because... Um, I'm not great at it. <laughs> and um, I, I know you all would love to have something to do with it, even if it's just passing on the word, even if it's a, if you make videos, even if you just put in a video, uh, your next so many videos that, hey, don't forget to go check out what's doing over here or what's doing over there. You know, um, that helps immensely. And we're not looking to buy them a new house or a new garage. I asked them, you know, what do you need? You need, you know, you got to get that garage going right now. You need to, you know, what'd you guys lose? Do you, do you need snakes to rebuild your collection? Do you need racks? Do you need cash? I go cash. If it was me, I'd be like, look, cash is what's going to help me the best. Um, but they were like, look, we, you know, we were very taken back that we wanted to do this and very grateful to let me do it. Cause you know, I'm not the type of person who's going to do it anyway. I kind of told them that I was like, I'm going to do this anyway. And it ain't hard to get your information. I got your email. We just, probably your PayPal. <laughs> you know, we're going to do it anyway. Um, and it's okay to help out because once you watch this video um, that I posted, uh, you will see that these people are just deserving people. They're good people. Um, I can relate in a lot of ways to them. Um, I have seven brothers and sisters that are adopted brothers and sisters that started out as foster brothers and sisters. And um, they are foster parents. I mean, you, you, can't ask for a greater deed than the giving giving a child a home you just can't and and regardless of how you feel you know what i mean it, you don't have to be a religious person to feel like you got to do good things you don't have to be any sort of thing uh, to give a child a forever home um and you know i thought i was done having kids myself you know i was like all right so many years left to my sentence lj moves out i'm doing my thing gonna buy my motorcycles back gonna get my cars back you know what i mean all that stuff you know, relive that youth you didn't have. Um, <laughs> and uh, and it's, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought because I just started thinking of something and it started making me sad. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that um, sometimes when you just, you know, to do, to do a good little thing. So I'm not looking to raise a million dollars for them, but they could use a rack, actually. They could use racks for their snakes. Um, they're not keeping them in a rack situation right now at a friend's house. Um, uh, so that's really what they need to raise some money for. So I'm thinking about putting something together. I, anyway, about myself, we took my nephew in and, um, and I, and, and I was like, oh, wow, I got to start all over with kids and stuff. And it ended up being the best thing ever. So it's very rewarding all the way around is what I was getting at before. But, um, um, I'd like to do something for him. So whether it's get together, do little raffle things for different things, I'm sure I'm going to put in something. I don't know, uh, snakes or so i'll put in snakes uh something something and um if you all are interested maybe you have something maybe you have a snake sitting around that you you know you're like you know what i this would be worth a, a worthwhile thing i was thinking about uh it's been on the morph market for a little while now let me let me go ahead and find it a good home for a good cause you know if you have something like that uh feel free, free to reach out to myself um I believe you'll be able to reach out to Iron Dog Reptiles as well. I, I didn't actually ask him that today, but I'm sure you won't have a problem with it. Um, I'm sure that they're talking about rads. What's happening, my friend? Um, yeah, you know, they're just good people, man. And they had a hard thing going on. And like I said, you know, we love all those big guys out there. When, when, when hard stuff comes to the community, no matter if they're big guys, little guys or whatever, people are there to help. Um, but sometimes, like I said, uh, us smaller channels get easily mislooked at. It's not a big problem. It's not a big deal. We can't be, you know, a lot of people put in a long time and hours in their channels to grow them the way they do. So you can't hate. All right. Um, but I like to kind of um, bring them out a little bit more so nobody forgets about them, you know. 
And, and at least they know, like I said, at the end of the day, I told them, I don't know what's going to happen here. We might just have a, a two tub rack and a snake. You know what I mean? But people will be smiling about it and it'll be a good time. And it's for a good cause. Um, and again, I'm still looking for some ideas. Not exactly sure how I'm going to set it up. This is going to be a few weeks down the road um, because I want to try and give it the best chance it has. Again, um, that's my thoughts on it. So if you have anything you want to add, uh, any help that you might want to do with, even if it's keeping track of this, that, or the other, or, or if you could even just be a contact to kind of keep track of everything, that's fine too. Um, but again, hopefully I'll be able to jump in with Iron Dog Reptiles in my animal house on the Iron Animal Show and be able to do a little round table to kind of straighten things out. More people putting out ideas, the better, the funner it will be. Um, I'm, I'm all right with putting on a, one of the game show deal styles. Um, I think um, I think it will be best if it's all right with the Iron Animal Show to do the main uh, deal the day it happens. Again, we can talk about this in the round table, but I would like, I think it would be best if we did it on one of your all's sh um, channels on one of your busier days. You guys go um, longer than I do and can go longer than I can. So uh, maybe on that day, um, I'll make an arrangement that I'll be able to do that. Uh, but I think overall throughout the week, a little bit more traffic will go through that way. So again, that's something we can discuss. Um, again, I talked a little bit to Chris about that earlier today. All right. So what's up? What am I missing? Anything good here? I know I was rambling on, but again, if you missed that link, I would uh, definitely, and it's okay. You can go leave my video and go check this video out. That's totally fine with me. And if you feel you need to skip through a little bit here and there or something, because you don't need to know the whole gist, whatever, you know, it only take a, a brief second of any part of the video to, to realize that these are good people and, and worth helping out. And again, they did not ask me, I asked them. Um, and that's where we're at. So, and, and, and Ben, man, I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. And I'm glad you right, right away. You came back. That's a great idea. I like that. Let's do that. I check my notes in case I lost some stuff. And don't forget Todd TT balls is going live right after my show tonight. So hopefully y'all go over there. I will leave a link for that as well. Um, always good to see Todd and hopefully Tosh, we don't get to see much of her. I hope she's okay. You better put her in a video pretty soon, Todd, or we're going to start thinking some funny crap about you. We already do if we're being honest, but I think more funny crap about you. But definitely a cool thing. But anyway, you can reach out uh, as, as, as if you have ideas that you can't wait until one of these little get togethers or whatever, the round tables to discuss some of the stuff, just to kind of put it together. And I don't mind doing the legwork either. Everybody, uh, uh, Chris and Justin, everybody, whoever helps out, I don't mind doing the legwork either and holding the, holding the stuff and doing the time. I'll do all that. That's not a problem. You know, uh, get the word out is really all I'm asking. Um, hey, Jen, thank you for joining from pedals and scales. Hey, I'm sorry. I know it's like I said, I didn't have a really big plan. I just want to kind of put it out to the community. I know there's a lot of good people out here. Uh, you don't have to donate stuff either passing on the word and stuff. When we make videos and put more videos out about it and show different things that we're going to be putting in there. Uh, ben is going to send me a picture of that rack for me. Cause he's cool like that. And uh, I'll have some pictures of that to put in videos and things like that. Anybody else that might want to do something. And again, if you don't, if you're not a donor, you can always be a buyer you know, or jump in on a raffle. If that's what we do, you can always just pass the word. Um, and at the end of the day, let's just make some smiles. You know, we're not, we, we don't have to buy nobody a new house, but it happens great. <laughs> yeah. They're good people too. Like that you, you're going to know you watch this video and you're just going to know that, you know, there's no bull crap. Uh, you, these ain't people that are telling us one thing. And then, you know, when the camera's off, you know, they're, they're kicking back you know, busting lines off of each other's belly buttons and none of that crap. They're, they're kind of religious too. So when I say stuff like that, it probably makes them cringe a little, but it's okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> I'm a tough cookie sometimes, ain't I? Get it. Well, thank you for stopping in. Hi, I appreciate it. And uh, go check out Exquisite Exotics, everybody, because um, they just put out their sale and I think it's going to end. They're going to post them on uh, Morph Market here really soon. And everybody that goes and checks out their stuff and wants to purchase something uh, gets a 10% discount before it even goes up. So you're going to want to get over there at Exquisite Exotics and check that out. The last video telling you what they had kind of up on for sale right now. So go check it out. For sure. Man, that Doug always writes. They must. They must. 
have a paper shortage over there or something because he always writes one long word. Got to save the paper. Well, uh, I appreciate um, uh, Jennifer and Mike let me uh, do this. You know what I mean? It's they're, they're not, they didn't ask. Like I said, they didn't ask. I asked them if I could do this. I, I kind of told them, look, we're going to kind of do something anyway. And we're really just trying to bring smiles to people's faces. You know, as well as I do, when you do something cool and you do something good for somebody, it makes you feel good. It just does. Um, that's why I do. And I've told you guys all this before. You all think that I'm, oh, he's always, does this. I do these giveaways, uh, especially in times when I'm not feeling the greatest. You know what I mean? Because it makes me feel good to make somebody else feel good. So you all know what I'm talking about. You've all had that feeling too. Maybe not before you're 12 years old, but after that, you you figured it out. Drop the link to join to join this thing. All right, I'll do that. Somebody wants to join my thing. That's weird. Nobody ever wants to join my deal. Sherry's the only one who comes and backs me up and wants to join. I can't drink tea anymore, so I've been drinking this tropical citrus vitamin water. It's horrendous. <laughs> oh, I put my notes away now. I had a couple notes. And I know I already thanked my new members. Again, thank you, new members. And I don't even see uh, Yvonne in here tonight. She must be busy. Just know, Yvonne, we all think about you anyway. And if I did I see her in here? Nikki, hello. I didn't say hello to Nikki. Once I get rambling and my brain kind of gets funky sometimes, I have to catch up with myself. That's the most embarrassing and crappy part about doing uh, lives for me. I haven't gotten better either. I think I'm, I don't think I'm as good as it's going to get. Okay. Sorry, Chris. I see you over there now. I'm adding you to the stream. What's going on, man? But I don't hear you. Do you hear me? Oh, I don't hear you because I have um, my mic down. I'm sorry. I'll turn you up. Everybody else can hear you. Uh, now I can hear you. Cool, cool. <laughs> I forgot I turned it down because I always uh, have mine on, and then I hear myself talking delay on the other part, so I turn the master volume down. Well, thank you, man, for joining my channel. This is cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've, we've had a couple people already reach out just during the show to me. I told me, you know. Instead of just dropping it in chat over and over, just said they can reach out to you, me, whatever, you know. And uh Yeah, take your time about it too. We got we're gonna have a little yeah. time with this. I, I I'd rather give it some time and build and and when it when it's not really getting some of the momentum kind of dies out, then you know, we're we're pull it off. I, I wanna try and do right. the best best we can, you know. Uh and we're good at this. We're good at this. I'm not saying we're as in me, you and anybody this community, we're good at, right. at, at uh doing this, you know. We don't pick jacked up reasons, you know. We're not trying to get nobody a boob job, although I wouldn't mind a little something up here. It's been a lot of work. Nothing's not, happening. Not trying to give, you know, get a, don a dollar from everybody so we can go buy a, a clown ball python. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to, we're not, you know, and, and that's the thing. I ask them, I'm like, you know, we'll go wherever you need. If you need some snakes or something, maybe I can get together some snakes, you know, help you kind of rebuild that. They're like, look, we're not looking for you know we're not looking for that that what will help them is actually just having a, a nice place to be able to house these snakes while they're at somebody else's house you know what i mean right. you know we were talking earlier about this you know housing somebody else's snakes that's a big decision that's a big decision i would be you know a lot of people gave chris i was talking to, to iron dog earlier today about this a lot of people gave ball pythons one-on-one -on -one a lot of crap for saying what he said i don't think i would have said what he said because it was just I mean, I, I right. couldn't picture me saying something like that, you know, but I, I can understand like, wow, bringing a whole, somebody's whole collection here to my collection, man, that would bother me. I get a, I have a hard time bringing a snake here that I bought, <laughs> you know, for right. myself. So it's a scary thing. Um, for, so for having somebody do that, to, um, just for their own security, they, they feel better. They lost their racks. They lost a lot of stuff, a lot of snakes. They actually, I believe if I, I'm sorry if I got this wrong. Uh, if not, then it sounds really cool and you should all just go with it anyway. But I believe they even found one of their snakes a few days later uh, in their pool um, that was must have somehow hid under the floor from the fire. Um, and if that isn't 100% correct, let's just say it is. Right. right. Small screwdriver. Well, I mean, too, just <laughs> to be able to not lose know all of them from smoke inhalation and everything you know i mean it was a you know they they 
had a lot of snakes. They got recovered, so that was good, you know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh, and you know, thank thankfully the the fire department were so so good. I mean, they were they were worried. They you know these are people that don't deal with snakes, and they're going in there, and they're like, you know, we got to pull these snakes out. It's what we got to do, and they did, and uh, that's awesome. And the com- yeah. and the community too. They were the community was bringing over tubs for them. I mean. That was pretty cool, you know. So. It is. It is because you know how it is in the community. And, you know, uh, I would love to have them on one day. After this is all said and done, I'm sure they would love to jump on and, and you know, and just and say some stuff to people because, you know, it's a nice thing. And 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 they're deserving people. It, it doesn't have nothing to do with the reptile thing. You just know they're deserving people. And um, when you're feeling really down, man, have a, people get behind you. That Sometimes that's all it takes. You know, sometimes that's all it takes to push you over the edge. And, you know, when, when good vibes are going and good feelings are going, that's when good stuff's falling in your lap. I mean, it really, you really do project uh, what's coming. You know what I mean? That's why when I'm in, when I'm feeling in a certain way, I'm really, I'm really cautious about, you know, how right. I handle that situation. Um, and sometimes it gets the best of you, but these are good people. You know, they are. Um, like I said, they jumped in here, they came into the community real quick, and everything else. And then all of a sudden they kind of just disappeared off and, and, and just hearing the loss of family members, you know, that, I'm a real family oh. guy. I judge people on how they are with their families. That's how I know who you are. Um, well, yeah, they just had, it just seemed like one after another. I mean, they, you know, the, the, they were thinking the bad luck, you know, they were just, you know, it's got to get better and it will, it'll get better. You know I mean? It, it is. And, you know, I, I don't know why I think, I think everything does happen for a reason. Even the worst things that have happened to me in life that I would never want to relive again, um, had a upside, you know, uh, you know, I, I hate to say this and I feel like I'm getting away with something and it's a horrible feeling for me. But if I'm being honest with you, uh, taking my nephew Eli in, um, yeah, I know everybody's like, wow, it's such a great thing you did. I'm like, you would do the same, man. You know, you just would, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, if you're a decent human being happened, at all, you're going to Somebody said yeah. that to me. I'd be like, hell no. <laughs> going to have to ask, please, can I have some more, miss? You know what I mean? That's That kid's going to have to go to a home or something. I have no more kids. You know what I mean? But when that stuff comes down, you know, I think even an asshole would step up, I would hope. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? But what happened, you know, is that he changed our lives. You know, he really did. He changed our lives. So again, my, my mom and my stepfather have seven foster children from the ages. Uh, I mean, God, they're my brothers and sisters are going to be so mad if I get this wrong, but somewhere in the ages around, I believe um, eight or nine to 15, almost 16. And uh, God bless them because, you know, my parents are up in the age and they travel around the U S and in, in their camper deal going to all the museum, all the things. That's what they do. When I was a kid, I grew up in the city. I was eating crackers with cheese on them and shit. And uh, found out a couple of years later that, that was butter, not even cheese. So, because mm. you might. <laughs> but uh, so it's good. But um, I know what it is. I know what it takes. You know, right. um, we have my nephew who's changed our lives, made our family tight. I mean, I'm telling you, I didn't even know my kids, man. So we moved here. From being honest, I was seventy hours a week wasn't nothing. Never came right. home. Was always working. Well, you know, some, that's just it. you know, it, so everything happens for a reason. Sometimes it does, it's a horrible you know. trail to go down to get there, but uh, maybe these things are meant to be for a reason, you know. Um, and regardless, I just think it'd be a fun time. So it's really cool. People have reached out, and again, you can reach out to me on Instagram, on the Facebook, on uh, on here, uh, my email going over gmail.com. You can reach out to Iron Dog Reptiles as well. Um, I, I think uh, having a having maybe one more person, uh, you know, or whoever I think you know wants to get involved would just be great. Again, even if it's just passing it on, you don't have right. to buy stuff. You don't have to spend money. You don't have. It takes a couple seconds to hit a like and a share button, or share it to your Facebook, share it to your you know, share it to your YouTube channel. Um, people are always coming up to me and. Hey, I got to come up with con- content. Okay. Well, here, here for the next so many weeks, you guys have some content, you know, that you can fill a good five or 10 minutes. If you're, if you're skilled enough in your video of this is a good deal. This is what's going on. This is what I've heard already. Make videos, put it out there, be part of it, take it over. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no shame. Ain't nobody here going to be like, Oh, I tried to do something nice for them. And then all of a sudden, so-and-so came along and threw this at the mix. And now they're the king dog. Be the king dog. 
I I bet you if won't. You, if you just share it one time, you did you're doing something, you know, or talking about it one time, you're doing something, you know. That's it's that easy. And tell us that man, you missed you missed most of the show. I'm really sorry, but hopefully you'll go back and check it out. I would appreciate it if you did, because um, you know, we had some some little things that you could learn, you know, take with you in case you're ever wanting to breed some snakes and trying to figure out what you need to do if your power goes off. If your power ever goes off, take that same water bottle I told you to put in the coolers and put them. Hopefully you got a gas stove like myself. And uh, you can warm them up inside a pan of water and put them in or next to your bin. If you put them in your bin, wrap them up good with a towel or something so that there's a barrier. You don't want to burn your snakes. That's gotten me through a couple uh, minus 20 power outages before. What, what was Andrew said one time? Something about water and was it? Um, icy mail or or melt or something. He said you put it in there and it it heats the water if you have no power. Yeah, so, um, uh, I can't remember what it was. I don't know if it was ice melt or, or yeah. Thanks a lot. You're making us both look dumb here because I can't think of it either. Yeah. But you all people know because you're way smarter than me and this guy. You know what we're talking <laughs> about. Yeah, when water gets hot, you used to have like some prison foods like that. I remember when Hurricane Charlie came out, uh, wiped out. We had two homes. We had the home we lived in, and we had a home that we were um, renting for my wife's daycare. And when hurricane Charlie came through, it was supposed to go up to Tampa, uh, but it took a right turn up Charlotte Harbor and took out both of our houses. Um, but they came around like an ambulance and stuff every single night for about a month. And it was like an ice cream ambulance truck, but they're handing out hot food and it had the little mixtures where it would heat up the food. And it was that stuff. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. If you have I some, I remember idea. Andrew saying something, you know, when the, with the deal with Texas, I'm like, I didn't even know that, you know? So, it was kind of good information. If, if some people, uh, all you can get, it's a, in a pinch. You need to go to a gas station. You're up north. You're in a cold weather climate or a hardware yep. store, and you got the hand heat packs. You can use those in emergency situations. Don't just throw them in there with your snakes. You don't want to do that. Um, these things burn at usually uh, the foot ones and the hand ones burn at dif different temperatures. You're going to want to check that. But you're going to want to wrap it up in something and then maybe stick it under the bin if you can or even tape to the side of the outside of the bin is usually enough. Uh, the snake will find it, but um, those things will help you out a lot. Man, that well, I lost power in my incubator for three hours one time, and I lost a half a degree because I had them water bottles in the bottom the whole time. Yeah, and I never, op I never opened the door, so I just kept that heat in there. It's awesome. You, know? you, you should. You, everybody should have water bottles and jugs inside their incubators. Everybody, I, I, I know people. Some people don't, but I do. I always have. Well, if you got to make an egg box up all of a sudden, too, you can use one of them water bottles as that temperature of the incubator, you know. I'm not sure if you're um, asking reptile feedings uh, if I'm in Florida. I'm no, actually. I want to know if you were a Florida man. Yeah, I've, I was in Port Charlotte, Florida for like 22 years. So we moved up here seven years ago. Before that, I was born and raised in New York until I was 15, I should say. And then I was in Florida until I was 38 or something. Sodium chloride. I spent a lot of time with venomous animal, venomous snakes, but none of them I ever kept. I started out just going to job sites, and I'd be the guy to go get the snakes out of there, or the alligators out of there, or whatever's bothering. The, I worked for a seawall company, so we'd always come in before the house was built to put the seawall in, the dock in, or whatever, the boat lift. And uh, my job turned into just going to job sites, getting diamondbacks out, coral snakes, uh, moccasins, lots of moccasins. Um, one day I had to keep manatees from chewing on people's pockets. They were chewing in my pockets, scared the shit out of me. And mm. then I, the whole day just kind of, and you're not allowed to mess with them, which would have made it really hard. But the homeowner wanted his dock built so bad he was going to come out and shoot the manatee and shit. Well, you can't just shoot this thing. What the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> Florida people are the craziest of them all. And I've been to Chicago many a times. Thank you, so, Heather and Doug. That's what we were thinking. Sodium What's chloride. That? So thank you, smart Heather. Smart dog. He put it out there too, I guess. <laughs> yep. Smart Heather and smart dog. Two you are now. Now look at now they're patting each other on the back down there. Heather, you and your big spoon head. Stop. I, I I say how awesome you are. You guys are like, yeah, we're great good minds, you know. <laughs> yeah. ah. I'm only kidding, you know that. I mean that's good to know because you know, something just like that could save you like a lot of could save some maybe some people in in uh Texas when that happened, if they had known about that, you know. Yeah, man. Um, you know, 
that was such a freak thing. You know, that's so hard to protect yourself against. I'm a hypochondriac warrior for stuff. Um, you know, I get picked on by my, my kids and my wife a lot of times about how, oh, Mr. Perfect, you don't mess up. I'm like, yeah, but you guys see me strangling myself to get it done that way. I mean, it's not like a walk in a park. <laughs> like, right, I'm right. working to make it do that. You know, you got to put it on it. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, there's a lot of little things that will help you out. Again, the biggest one, though, is the people moving. I, I get that a lot. And, you know, and I've told these people how to do this. And I don't know, you know, Donnie, I love the guy. But I, he's called and asked me more questions than anybody. And I'm not even exaggerating than anybody ever. And I'm happy to answer him because I honestly love the guy. But holy crap, I don't know if he's ever taken one bit of advice I've ever given him. He, 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 I, I know he packed every one of his snakes up in bags and put them in totes and put them in a car. Good. I've seen, and I've seen, and I think, I don't know if he took his rats out or if he put them in a big holding thing, but he had his rats he brought. And then I, I told him, put the, the rats are going to have to go in their own bins, tub bins, big tubs, and yep. they're going to have to have a bunch of fluff in there. Yeah, and then and I go. know that uh, Small Town Exotics just moved from Cali to Tennessee, and he packed all his up the same way into, you know, into bags and totes, so, and yep. boxes and everything. So and he, look, and they arrived just fine. They really yep. will. There's so many people shortcut that strap, the freaking bin to the, and it never works out. The snakes stop eating. The snakes won't breed. The snakes die. It happens a lot. You'd be surprised. I and mean, people, if you were moving 10 minutes down the road or something, maybe, you know, I mean, five, 10 minutes, you know, but if you're, you're doing any kind of trip. Yeah. It's, it's just yeah, take for a ball out. python for a ball python. I mean, you could get away with stuff with a lot of different stuff. Retics. They don't, they don't really care about that stuff. That's not what bothers retics at all. Just have their food on time is all that matters to them. <laughs> but ball pythons are just skittish. like that. They're very skittish. That's why they're ball pythons, you know? Well, yeah, and that's the thing, you know, you can get a 41 quart tub if you had them and you could put five, six, seven snakes in their bags. You know what I mean? Yep. I mean, so they'll generate off the heat off each other anyway. So no, a little bit, a little bit, but they will activate yeah. real quick too. But you know, and that too, you can keep track of it. Yeah, you, good. How you what, what? I'm hearing people talking. Oh, oh. TNT balls went live. <laughs> He's got some people on there. Um, I'm going to go for a few more minutes. Let him kind of just start get going. I'll put a link in here for y'all to go. Please check them out. At least stop in real quick and tell them that uh, y'all love them. Thank you for putting on a show. I want to get um, somebody consistent following my show. I think it would be very helpful to them as well as myself. Um, but if somebody consistently could go after this show, it would be really cool. Because <laughs> I never knew who to tell. For these people that are wanting to share this out, and I know people want to do it on Instagram. W when would you say a good time to to be able to let them know what date this will be going on? So, well, because you know, you know um, people are going to say, "When's this happening?" And they're going to be like, "Yeah, oh, yeah." I'm just um, opening a video, you know. Well, you know, I really I can't give a date. I would just say, um, I would say. <sighs> I'm looking at it don't channel. matter whatever day you want to go on our channel. I, I would know, prefer to, to last a few minutes. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. If it, if it could go to somewhere between the 20th and 27th, even, um, even if we don't get a ton of stuff, uh, we can plan it out better, have more time to plan it again. You know, we don't know how we're going to set it off yet, but, um, the, the, the day, 20th, the, the 20th to 20th, you said the 20th to 27th? Yeah, between then. Something that we'll work with uh, some other players in the game that are going to put videos out or time in. Um, you know, The 28th, we can't do, which is a Friday, but we can do 26th, which is a Wednesday. I love that. 24. You know, the 26th is a Wednesday. We can do that. That's okay. May 26th. So. All right, well, you talk it over with Justin as well. Um, but we're yeah. just saying tentatively the 26th of this month, we will pull it off. So please have, uh, if you... If we're, we're just let people know that if you want to donate something, be very clear. If you want to donate something, be very clear in what you're donating and how it's being donated. Um, and uh, that way we don't have any confusions. That way, if say maybe you want to donate a snake or something, um, uh, let them know that uh, shipping's not included. So that person will have to 
go through this route or that route. Or, we'll or you, included, whatever you want. Or is yeah. included, just um, so that by the time it comes out, once it comes out, it's set in stone. I'll hold you to it only because, you know, I can't afford to pay all of it either. Right. <laughs> but, um, and again, you don't have to donate anything. Get the word out. Other people might be willing to, you know, um, and that's fine. And again, even if we have a snake and a, and a two tub bin, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to share a lot of stuff with each other. And again, if you're looking to make some content, add a minute or two to your channel by talking about pedal and scales. They're awesome yep. people. Put a link that to gives, the video. That gives plenty of time to get it out there to get, you know, people out there to share it. People that donate if right. they want or just, just to talk about it. And, It'll and be the 26th of May. Yeah, and we have a deadline by the time everything's going to be in, like uh, by the 20th or something, you know, we'll be like, we'll have it yeah. all set in stone by then. And of course, anybody wants to add in something after that is, of course, always welcome because we'll go right up right. to the last minute for it. Um, but if we can help them get a little closer to maybe getting a small rack, even just getting the material to build a rack that will work for them is that these people are not even asking for this. <laughs> okay. So right. um, this is just me going on. I asked them, you know, what would help them the most. And I think they just feel like having a, their snakes in a, in a rack system at this other person's house is going to make them feel better. It's going to make themselves feel better. The person that has it. Um, whatever it is, I don't care if they wanted to buy a giant stuffed animal. Cause that was going to make them feel better through this hard shitty time. Then let's buy them a bunch of stuffed animals. That's how I feel right. about it too. I can't they, don't be one of those people. You're helping out somebody and then get upset because they do didn't do what you wanted to do. You know what I mean? If they get that money and, and say, listen, uh, it was better spent instead of getting a rack, it was better spent to, uh, get wired to rebuild our own garage or whatever, then feel free. You know what I'm saying? Right. I kind of like how JDI did, or JDI, <gasps> D, DMJ. Oh, Are you getting me kicked right. off my channel? Ch Ch not now, Chino, from, Chino, Chino from DMJ did it when he did it. You know, he, you know, people have donated stuff. And then he said, if you say donate $5 to their PayPal, you get an entry into the drawing, you know. That's what I would like to do. Yeah. And then, and, 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 you know, and so, or if you donated 20, you got four entries, whatever it was. And, you know, so then, and that includes you in all drawings. Now, once you won, I think your name was pulled, but that includes you in, you know, you just ain't one and done. You know what I mean? Right. And and it, my thought of that was they they kind of bid in different tiers for whatever it is. Yes. Like they would get yes. some snakes, they could put a five spot on this or a ten spot on that, and yes. be in both of them. You know, they can be in the running for both of them. We, you know, so again, we're brainstorming up. I'm open for anything. Again, at the end of the day, we bring a little bit of a smile. We're done. Sorry, Heather. I didn't mean that. I don't know why I didn't even come out that way. What? <laughs> you can shut your damn mouth. <laughs> she told me. I appreciate that, My Derek. bad. My bad. I understand, Derek, too, and I tell people this all the time, that the person you see on my channel is who I want to be. It's not who I always am. It's who I want to be. It's who I do try to portray. It is who I try to be around my children, and all of that is because of my children. It has nothing to do with you all at all. I've been raised by some pretty funky crap. And I was like, my kids ain't going to grow up thinking it's okay to do this or be like that. Or and it, all the stuff I do 100% is for them. And it's no offense. It's a God's honest truth. And you can see it in my kids. You can ask people around here. They can say whatever they want about us, but they can't say that my kids are anything but uh, polite, uh, forward, and honest at all costs. You know what I mean? So really, that's why I do it. So thank you. That's why. So now you know. <laughs> right. Uh, and listen, the benefit is, is that it makes me a good person. What's bad with that? I used to be an ass, man. I've done some bad shit, bad stuff. Uh, I'm talking about bad like and stuff. <laughs> <fun> stuff. <laughs> Granted, it was on the school bus and it was a number two pencil. The kid was fucking with my brother, but regardless, it went down. I might bring my brother on this channel one day so he can tell you all about it. <laughs> but I grew up in a crappy situation, man. I grew up in a rough neighborhood. I was, you know, I didn't grow up and none was it handed to me. My parents are doing pretty well. They've done pretty well. And I never asked for a dollar for none of them. I've always been my own person. So, and it works good for me before that. I appreciate it more work. when you, you work to buy your own stuff anyway. It is, man. My kids know yeah. it too. That's why my kids bought this bike. He's rebuilding it. <sighs> my kids are so much better than I ever was. Almost every kid I've ever met was so much better than I ever was. But, but I'm just like, I'm so thankful, man. Cause I was doing bad things and I'm not just talking like bad things. I'm just talking like just, 
man, what a shitty kid. <laughs> right. You gotta be sneaking in girls' windows and shit. Just like you're just a kid. What, the heck what are you doing? hanging out with that Uber guy? <laughs> I tell you, uh, my son just pulled up. I'll leave you all with this quick story, and then we can go check out um, Todd from TNT Balls. I may have told this story before, but uh, back in my day when I was kind of a dick, there's this girl named Angie Sternivan. I'll just say her name because I haven't seen her. It hasn't popped up on a Facebook and or anything like that over the 20, 30 years or it's been or whatever. But I was dating her. I was with my friend. Uh, Mike Taylor and, and Tim Oates. Tim Oates was a nutbag. You know, it's like three in the morning, gonna go sneak over to her house, gonna go hang out with her, get her to come outside, you know, and you know, play doctor. You know what's up. I was a teen. <laughs> so uh we sneak over there, I tap on her window, she comes to the window, she says, I'll meet you at my garage window. I was like over to the garage window. Now the corner of the <laughs> I'm sitting there in front of this door, the garage door, not the garage door you pull into, in the side of the garage where you walk in and out kind of garage door, you keep your garbage can. And uh I could see a silhouette coming. Now, Tim's on the corner of the house. So if you're looking, if you're her inside looking out the door, you can only see me and Mike Taylor. You can't see Tim over here. He's, you know, he's, you can't see him through the wall. He's standing there. All I see is a blouse coming. I start talking all sweet and gangster like, yo, what up, girl? Looking good. It's her mom's, man, right? <laughs> so, so she's like, I'm going to call the cops. And I'm like, what? Angie, what you calling the cops on me for, girl? What's going on? And why you sound like you've been smoking? A bunch of cigarettes. <laughs> Surf moms and shit. Couldn't see it was dark out. So uh she starts going off and talking about calling cops, this and that. I'm like, look, I'm really sorry. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I I, I just met your daughter the other night at and at the church thing, which is the truth. And uh <laughs> we got kicked out of it. I didn't tell her that part of it. But uh at the church thing, and um I, I just had to see her again. I mean, I'm new to the whole neighborhood. This is it, it's I'm very sorry. Well, while this is going on, Tim's got his shirt over his head and his pants and his underwear down to his ankles, and he's flopping around dancing just inches from us. We couldn't help it. We started laughing. I couldn't help but start laughing. So then I just moved her over too, man. I think she was about to give me her number and be like, why don't you come back later on? You know, I swear to God, that's how close it was. I was totally smoothing her over. It was going so nice. And then Mike Taylor starts laughing. I start laughing. She's like, oh, so this is funny. Maybe I should call the cops. And I couldn't say it. I just grabbed Tim's ass, who still has the shirt over his head, and he's still flopping around dancing. I just dragged him, pulled him in front of the fucking door, and he like took the fuck out. <laughs> oh, I've done some bad stuff. Matt burnt down a house with two Harleys in it. Nobody was in there. And it wasn't purposely either. So I guess it wasn't malicious. That was my first time smoking weed with some big kids. What are you I saying, thought, Zach? You would have won, wouldn't you? <laughs> he goes, I knew he was a bad influence. <laughs> oh, I was, man. I I was. Hung out some put myself in some dumb places. I was that little guy that didn't have the little guy syndrome. I just didn't know I had a syndrome. <laughs> As my brother would say. <laughs> but I've mellowed out. I mean, this is old school stuff, old stuff. My when yeah, I met you, my wife. Usually was, when you get a little older, that that stuff kind of, you know, you change a little bit than when you was when you was in your Younger days, you know. I I, I never I I always kind of kept out of trouble with the law. Like I always walked that fine line, or I had an attorney, which has really helped. Like I said, if you're kind of a dick, get an attorney because it really helps you. <laughs> if I didn't have one, all my friends didn't have one, and they all got little tiny felonies that screwed them for the rest of their life. I got nothing. Matter of fact, I get pulled over. I could do a 360 in the middle of the freaking road. The cop will walk up, and I could tell him, "Hey, I kissed your mom last night," and he say, "All right, just slow down." I don't. I can't get a ticket to save my life. Rob in here still? Rob, tell him what happened the other day when I pulled up to go kayaking with you. Made that cop chase me <laughs> 360 in the road. And then I just told him, yeah, I heard a funny noise in my turbo and I just couldn't, I didn't know what it was. I, my mechanic's right here, actually. I'm going to go kayaking with him. So I just stepped on it a little bit to see if I could hear that noise again. He's like, all right, slow it down. I, was like, Man. I just told him the night before too that, that I don't get tickets. <laughs> yeah, 90 and a 45. All right, slow it down, kid. <laughs> like, all right, sir. <laughs> You sure yeah, we're going 71. 71. Rob is in here. See, I told you I was doing 71. <laughs> and I told him, I told Rob the night before, I go, dude, I don't get tickets. I swear to God, I, 91 mile an hour going down to bring the kids to the dentist, full car full of kids, little kids and shit in the car. I'm hauling ass and shit. The cop dukes a hazard around, took him 20 minutes to catch up to me. I didn't even slow down, seen him the whole time. Pulls me over, gets my license, gets my CPL, goes to the car, doesn't even open the door all the way, comes back. All right, man, slow it down. So next time when I get pulled over, I'm just going to be like, yo, I got your mom in my trunk, man. I'm going to do something. I got to do something. I got to see what's up. Something fishy. 
<laughs> but I was funny because I was just telling him that the day before, and then I pulled up. I'm like, dude, I'm going to be a minute. He goes, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> That's funny. But I told you I wouldn't get no ticket. I threw my seatbelt off. I got to hop out of the car and everything. You know, like all the crap they tell you not to do. Yeah, okay. I got a gun on me. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Well, that's funny. That CPL is what really helps you, man. That CPL yes. gets you out quick as shit. I mean, I, I mean, no matter what, I think I think that's the saving grace. Because when they see that CPL, automatically they know you don't have any felonies. Like they don't have to be worried that like, you've ever used a weapon, had any aggressions, any assaults, any batteries, um, any resistance, or any of that kind of crap. It it really mellows the cop out right away. Well, and you yeah. let them know I got a CPL and I and, and if I got a gun on me, and then, then they know you're being honest and you ain't hiding something from them either, you know. Well, Harper's a jerk off, man. Well, <laughs> Going around Dukes of Hazard painting people's cars, numbers on their cars, and crap making people's cars into race cars. What's up, Venom? What up, Venom? I'm jumping off of here. I'd love for you all to go check out my boy Tide over at TNT Balls. I'm dropping a link right now. Go on over there and just say you're there because you caught his show. You don't have to say anything yep. special. Matter of fact, just say, oh, dude, I just seen you pop up, man. I wanted to come in and say hi. If y'all could do that for a quick second for me, I would appreciate it. Uh, the guy's just a good hearted dude. And I love him. All right, everybody, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell. I'll let you know, upload a video. And as always, I love you all. Bye. <laughs> See, See bye. me, bye. See me, bye.